that the story day, and excuse me, he impressed upon me that he wants uh, me, he wants us to uh, build his church. And I remember last video we had what uh, I was talking about, God's dream. God's dream was for us to uh, have the Holy Spirit, for young men to dream, for young men to see visions and old men to dream dreams and God's dreams. Isn't that like Jesus seeing visions and God the Father having a dream? Maybe, perhaps, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad I have the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and I wish you to have it too, but I can't force you, and I won't. And I won't tell you it's wrong. I won't tell you either way, because it's your decision. But uh, let's talk about building God's kingdom, building uh, God, what God says about it, how he feels. You see, I have my whiteboard here, and what I'm using for my whiteboard, let's see who's calling me. Oh, somebody wants to call me. See, Dominic is calling me. But you know what? I'm busy now, okay? And uh, here we go. I'm using the uh, e-sword that I told you to download. All right? So let's go right here. Let's start, okay? It says, God's calling you. Hello? Will you answer God's call? And uh, I think that's pretty big. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you, okay? Because uh, let's go to 36. And I have that. I'll go like that. That way, and save it. That way, you know why? Uh, make sure you see it. Okay. Now, um, can I ask you uh, to watch? And not only watch, but please like share and subscribe it really helps the channel when you do that because uh, what it does is uh, uh, Facebook sees people are watching and they get all excited and they help promote it and we want to promote God kingdom don't we see I I built all my websites on the principle I'm going to show you now I have multiple websites um, Daniel spider is new Okay, now we're on Facebook. I'm going to upload this to YouTube too. See here? See that? Uh, let's start right here. The green one. See, it's always time to donate. If you'd like to donate, not only money, but your time. You're donating when you're liking, sharing, and subscribing. You're donating when you share the knowledge with somebody at a supermarket or somebody at church or one of your friends. You don't even have to tell them about me. But if I give you a nugget, if I give you a truth, and you share it with somebody, I will not lose my reward, because it's from God the Father. We're building His kingdom, His kingdom on earth, His glorious kingdom, because His Son died for us. Do you know, you can do the same thing I'm doing. You can have a website too. Maybe you can do it better than me. But if, you, if I can help you with a, 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 a piece of truth, if I can help you see something you didn't see before, wouldn't that make you stronger, even though you might be able to do it better than me? See, God's anointing me out now to do this. And you don't have to be strong. You don't have to have a PhD or education. You don't have to graduate from high school or be 70 or 60 or 10 or 21. You can be young, old, you can be any color it's okay you can be you don't have to have religion you don't have to be perfect you know all this stuff about people having to be perfect like how we pick people apart and stuff like that well that's kind of nonsense because I'm gonna blow that out of the water right now because you know Paul uh, the apostle who wrote the New Testament mostly him he was a murderer uh, he was a Pharisee going around killing the early Christians. He stoned to death Stephen. And uh, what happened is uh, he was on his way to Syria, to Damascus, 
to kill more. He got paperwork to do it too. Legal warrants to go and find the people who are Christians and kill them. But what happened is uh, Jesus put a stop on him. He came down from heaven in a beam of light and blinded him. And everybody was afraid of Saul, but uh, he had, that which, which, which was his former name, Paul's former name. So he had, he had to go see somebody, a Christian, uh, to restore his sight. So you see, you don't have to be perfect and your past doesn't matter. You know what really counts? Let's, why don't we concentrate on your future? Concentrate on my future and your future. So if I teach you something that you, you didn't see before, or if I teach you something that upsets your theology, then you can really see that, that it, what you thought you thought wasn't really what it was. Then, then that's a reward for me. Oh, what's going on here? And, uh, see, I had to watch the windows. See, I, I, I moved my mouse lately, and the windows want to act up. So, um, so that's what we got with the donation. But if you go ahead and uh, the QR that code right there, you go go to Glorious Mercy. And on Glorious Mercy, I know it says the time to donate, but if you go there, uh, I have donations for you. And what I'm going to give you is uh, all my websites. I will give you all my knowledge and you don't have to pay for it. It's free. How can I charge you something that God died for and spent thousands of years writing and, and having people die uh, and, and, and sacrifice their life all over the world and charge you for it? How can I charge you for the great Holy Spirit that's come on me and given me this insight and knowledge? I, I don't understand how people do that. I can't. I, I will not. Okay? It's too holy. I just shudder and think. Woo -woo -woo. Okay, so um, let, let, let me see here. You see this, uh, the fire with the three people in it? Well, that's uh, Meshach, Abednego, uh, and uh, Meshach, Abednego, and uh, Meshach, Abednego. There's another one in there. We're looking up at uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 25, and that's what Daniel's fire. 325.com my Facebook profile one of them I have two of them I have another one at Daniel Hanlon dot 144 God gave me that number 144 I think it's great right uh, I love it love that number and uh, see God's in the middle of those children because the king got all pissed off because they wouldn't worship him or his statue his image or his statue so what they did is uh, they threw him in the fire. And uh, God stepped in in the middle of it. And they weren't really in the fire. They weren't in the fire. But, you know, I think uh, what they seen, the dancing around and everything, God kind of uh, did a, uh, uh, mm, a open heaven for them. So they could, they were like in heaven. They were in the fire physically. But I think their spirits was in heaven for a while with the king, if you know what I mean, because God can make us go in two or three places all at once. So uh, the king got all upset and got them children out, uh, even, and then, because uh, some of his people were killed because the fire was so hot trying to put them in, but he got them out there, and uh, he, he told his whole kingdom that nobody got to talk about uh, the God of these uh, children because uh, I can think he was real on the scared side. Okay, he was a he great king, but he was on the scared side. So, uh, uh, God called us Jets, okay? Now, if you go to that website, see if you go, if you see, we go to the green thing, do the icon, then you go to this uh, Glorious Mercy website, and it has uh, two Facebook uh, links on there. The first one will go to my uh, Daniel Handel 144, and the second one will go to Daniel's Fire. And then if you keep scrolling down, you see a list of multiple websites there. There's a healing outreach org, healing, let's see, healing outreach center org, healing outreach center net, and uh, I also have uh, 
other ones on there. Now, I have websites within websites, and so I, what I uh, made is a menu for the healing room of your heart. Because when I was doing these websites, God was just telling me, uh, showing me these few pages over and over again, and uh, telling me to make a menu for it, and it would be a website in itself. And if you go through that website, you're going to see uh, nothing but healing, okay? And uh, I do love all the old revivals and all the people, uh, all God's generals. Uh, I, I built a website about them because we can't lose that. And God's next revival, which is happening right now, is to incorporate all the website, all the generals of the past. I mean, all the things they did before, God's going to do all that again. And uh, this revival with all those things, all those pieces in there. So it would behoove us to study all that. Now, uh, if anyone's watching me and, and they want to make fun of me or anything like that, then I'm going to ask God right now to uh, make the tongue into a banana if they like to talk evil about God's people. Okay? Let that tongue now be a banana. Okay? And let it stay a banana until they repent. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I think we got about three or four bananas out there now. Okay? So don't talk about God's people. And uh, personally, I don't care if you talk about me now because it doesn't matter. Because, see here, God's love, Romans 5, 5. God's love is poured into me because his love is deeper than your hate. Do you know if you if we flew above an ocean and seen all the ocean for miles and miles from one end to the other, uh, from one horizon to the next, it would be like uh, you can imagine that's how much hate is in the world, right? Uh, the uh, see on the surface how much there is, but God's love is deeper than all that hate because you know what? You ain't seen nothing till you got into the ocean. God's love can, is not just some surface thing. It's deep. Okay? You know, all of my life, I've always been alone. Uh, I had parents, but they didn't really interact with me. Or my brothers and sisters. You know, I have really never had a conversation with my brother. Or my sister. I have two sisters. Now, I, I do talk to one sister a lot since I was small, but that's all. So I've always been alone all of my life. And uh, I had a newspaper out, and in that newspaper, they always said about the military, advertising for military, because uh, I'm from Cleveland. So they have a, a pay center there for the whole military. So they advertise there. So I went into the military when I was 18. And one instance, one, one time I was on TDY flying from one place to another. And on a jet, I was flying above the Rocky Mountains, about three, four miles high. I don't know how high it goes. And I remember looking outside and down from the air, aerial view and feeling that I said to myself, I now am all alone. I'm all by myself and I'm all alone because I'm even separated physically from my family. And I felt so lonely at that time. For a long time, years. But you know, when I received the Holy Spirit, since ever since after that time, I have never been alone. And if now I realize that I have never been alone, because it says in John chapter 1, verse 9, that's the Gospel of John, it says that God lights up every man that cometh into the world. So God's been there all along for me. He was in my inner heart, like this little closet. God's 
your spirit, your souls, and your stomach. And inside there, there's a little closet, like the holies of holies, and it's got bail over there. When you apply Jesus' blood over your heart for repentance and forgiveness of sins, and asking Him to come into your heart, He rips that veil from top to bottom and steps into you. And, and Jesus comes in there, and inside Jesus is the Father. So when you get Jesus, you got the Father. Or ever since then, I've never been alone. Now over here, you notice this bull uh, with the 23 on it. That's Michael Jordan's basketball number. Michael Jordan had passed away. Uh, I don't know when, but I know he, he's gone. And uh, But uh, I, I love that red bull because it's like the blood of Jesus. And you see it in his chest, it's got a little heart on there. So I use that for my YouTube icon and for like my ID my idea icon so uh, if you click on there you go go go, go to the YouTube channel uh, where I have my playlists and I put videos up there all kinds of videos and some worship videos you could go there and worship have a worship service right there you can have worship service and you can take you could stream some of those songs or download some of those songs to your computer ahead of time there's a there's, there's a treasure trove of things there that's what i'm trying to say that's why i put the rule, uh, red bull there it's an extension of my facebook it's, a, it's an extension of danielsfire.com i married those two things together okay so it's for your learning for your worship Okay, and if you go to Glorious Mercy and you go to, uh, I think if you just if you go go to www.danielhanlon.com, that's D-A-N-I-E-L-H-A-N-L-O-N.com, and that will bring up a menu. Oh, that won't bring up the menu. That one goes to uh, who the Antichrist is, and that's the one. That's the one for deliverance. Okay, that's my deliverance menu. But if you wanted to go to a menu where you can uh, download a place uh, where you can pray every day, I have a friend. His name is Chris Garcia, and he'll pray with you every day, for like two or three hours in the morning, and he has the music going on, and. Uh, you can connect up with him too okay so I mean more than merrier right it's all the family of God right so here's another website www dot proggy club okay now uh, froggy dot club so f r o g g i e dot c l u b because it's not com it's club not dot com it's dot club froggy dot club and you know what I, I I named it that way because I think that we need to uh, be uh, jumping on the devil. We need to jump on the devil. Okay, we need to take a club, like, with, you know, be a frog, and just jump up and down with that club, and just club the devil's head, club the devil. Okay, aren't you tired of the devil? And see, if you notice right here, it's all on Glorious Mercy Comp, too, because my Glorious Mercy is where is a menu for everything, too. See, I got menus every, everywhere, so uh, you're not gonna miss anything. So. This is just starting my video now, okay? So, let's go here. Now, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm not done yet, okay? So please uh, share, like, and subscribe. All right, now let's go here. Oh, okay. Let's go here. Okay, back here. All right, now I'm going to show you why, I'm ta why, why, why uh, I started this presentation today. Okay, now here is my E sword, and I'm on E. You see that E there? 
and they got buttons there. That's uh, for the Bible, okay? And over here is what Bible do I want? See, Amplified, Amplified C, King James Message, okay, uh, uh, NKIV, NLT, Compare, Parallel, all that. Uh, or here, do I want a multi-screen? See what you get for multi-screens? Okay, so uh, we're going back to the Bible, and we just want to uh, see that button there, King James Plus. Okay, so. Uh, we're going right here to see those binoculars. Okay, I put plus that binocular. You see, I'm teaching you this, you know why? Because the Lord, I want to do all this ahead of time. And the Lord says no, because uh, you have to have strength in yourself to be able to do these things for yourself. See, you can go to a preacher, or that preacher, this preacher, and tell them that you want to be prayed for, or you want to understand something, but you really have to do it for yourself because God said, I will build my kingdom on revelation knowledge. That's why he's come to plug into you. That's why he lives inside of you. It's because he wants to uh, be teach you. He wants to teach you personal. And he thinks that much about you where you need personal tutoring, okay? And we're gonna get some tutoring right now, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you how I do it, right? Because all this, Comes, I build my websites on revelation knowledge. What I did is I just started with a blank piece of paper like this, right? Like this here. And I told the Lord, I said, now Lord, some people call it fresh bread. I said, Lord, what, this is your website. What do you want me to put on your website? Okay? And you know, the Lord said, would, uh, would tell me. He'll give me ideas. And then I start writing those ideas, and then it would say, well, why don't you arrange it this way? And don't forget about that, and make this one bolder and bigger, like that. Well, it's just for something basic, okay? Like I was talking about, that God told me, to, uh, upon this rock, he will build his kingdom. Okay, so let's put a uh, build, On, on a rock build on a rock okay you see I have it on King James version there you not gonna move that around so move it around this way okay then I'm gonna click this button here and then it, it, it finds it for me okay so we can see in Judges 626 build an altar upon the top of this rock okay and that kind of as soon as I heard, seen that you know what hit me? Cal uh, Golgotha, the cross on top Golgotha, where Jesus bled to death. Golgotha means a skull. And you know, if Jesus lives inside our stomach, because I heard his voice there, so I know he lives there. If uh, his word, I heard two words from God. And if uh, in my life, if I, I heard more of that now, and still small voices, but audible, audible voices, okay. And um, if, if, God, if God lives in the stomach, then if uh, he died on the rock, you know, if he died on, uh, like on Golgotha, then he died, his, his cross is on top of my skull, bleeding. He's bleeding to death because God lives in the present. He's ever bleeding on top of my mind. So wasn't there two people that were, now this is coming to me, this is fresh bread, okay? You want fresh bread? It was baked from the oven, okay? And uh, two people were on top of that, died next to him. So there's two people dying all the time on top of my skull. There's uh, one who acknowledged him as the son of God, and, and the other one who didn't. So I think it's uh, every second of our lives is that's our choice. Are we going to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Son of God or not? See, it's an everlasting choice. It's not just a choice that, 
okay, now I believe in Jesus, the Son of God, and I'm going to live for him. And then the next hour, I forget about him. Because somewhere in the Bible it says that we should bear about the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, and also in Romans chapter 12, like verses 1 through 3, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, it says that we should be renewing our minds. Always time, all the time. With the and, the and the crosses on top of our head, with the two choices. And those two choices are what? The tree of uh, life, which is more center, or the tree of good and knowledge. So you cannot escape those trees. Adam and Eve had the choice of those trees. But we do too. And the tree looks differently nowadays. The tree is uh, the cross of Jesus Christ in the spirit and how you live. In fact, since Jesus Christ is inside of you, we're kind of like that tree of life walking around. You know, the tree of life walking around. And the tree of good and evil. You ever watch the Wizard of Oz? Everybody has watched the Wizard of Oz. Remember those crab trees that came alive and started picking off the fruit and throwing at people? Okay, that's like a crab. Those are like crab trees, crab apples. And I was wondering if pastors, when they when they bring in a whole flock of, when they bring in people that they get saved uh, when they catch the fish after they throw out the nets when they haul in their fish do they keep all their fish and what they catch or do they look over there and say hey ouch oh, that one's a crab I want to throw that one back or hey this one's just a mite a little bit small you know what I mean throw that one back or or some preachers do they look for which one's got the gold coins in the mouth and throw the rest above them all back. Okay, because that one is some churches, you know, and uh, if you don't give a donation in these churches, they don't like you. They they, tie, they they do things to force you out. They go and talk to, talk to about to you to other people, and then you feel like this uh, a dreaded uh, barrier between you all, and then you stop going to church. Because they have to have room for the people who pay. Now I pay when I go to church, but sometimes when I go to church, I don't give them at all for a long time to see if they're going to love me or they're going to throw me back. So I'm testing to see if that's a good church or not. Okay. All right. See, I give all, and all this to you and I'm not asking you for anything. Uh, I'm ordained by God. I'm not ordained by man. Uh, God's given me everything. So if you give to me, it's good ground. If uh, you give to someone who's ordained, that took a, they could just be having a church as a hobby. They could be fixing their cars up. They could be having a real estate. Uh, they can have like 10 different businesses on the side. And God's just one of them. So here you are, and the whole group of you are, giving all your money to somebody who don't even who doesn't even know God or, or care about know God. He just has a, a degree. And uh, is that what you really want? I think we're going to go here and teach you how to do this for yourself. Okay. So I'm going to pray. Touch during your computer right now. I want to pray that God give you revelation knowledge too. Okay, now Lord God of heaven, please touch these people, Lord. Show them your anointing, Lord, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, maybe all these people don't have uh, Jesus inside of them. Maybe they don't have the Holy Spirit. Maybe they don't know how. Maybe, like the church where I told them to write their name in the Bible, right? Maybe a lot of them don't even have a never known that they need to apply the blood 
over their heart or how sinful it is not to invite the Holy Spirit into your heart. Oh Holy Spirit, or to walk every day and not even say hello when they get up in the morning. Holy Spirit, please have mercy on these people, Lord God. Show them, feel the power. Come into the hands, Lord. Please, I ask you, Lord. I beg you, Lord. Please let the Holy Spirit come on their hands and going up their arms right now, up to the elbows. Oh, it's around their knees now, Lord, Holy Spirit. It's all around them, Lord God. Breathe in. I put the blood of Jesus over your heart. Uh, put the blood of Jesus over your heart. Say, Father, Father, come in into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I don't know. There's too many, too many for me to tell you about them. But forgive me all and be the Lord and King of my life right now, Lord God. Come into me humbly and sincere I am. Clean me up, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, now. Oh, I receive you. I receive you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Oh, someone's getting a mighty anointing. Ooh. Okay, they've, they've got in the, they, you got in the Holy Spirit. You're being anointed right now. Receive that. Teach them, Lord. Give them a, an ability to do what I'm doing here. You called them here. It's a purpose for them to be here now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now see, I'm ordained of God. And uh, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit is helping me. And that's why we get this burnt sacrifice. Because the sacrifice today, Jesus is the sacrifice. But you're supposed to be a living sacrifice. Remember we are talking about that partnership where you were wrapped into God like this here and the God was in the middle of the fire, right? Uh, and they were still in the fire but God was in the middle of the fire and then they had to go through the Red Sea and God was in the middle of the Red Sea when he closed it up on the Egyptians. Okay? Well that's the same thing here. God had died on a cross and he expects you to not die but being a living sacrifice every day when you're dying here, you're, 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 how do you die to yourself? When you get up in the morning, you ask God what He wants you, what He wants you to do for Him. You let God use your particular walk in you. Okay, and in fact, instead of it being you, you let you just follow God's directions, like Jesus did for the Father. Well, what would you like me to say, Father? What would you like me to do today, Father? Uh, because Jesus said not to pray to Jesus. Jesus don't want you to pray to Him. A lot of, I know a lot of people want to pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because I used to be Catholic. But Jesus doesn't even want you to pray to Him. So how would He want you to pray to His mother? She didn't want you to pray to her either. Because Jesus said to pray like this. Jesus said, Father. This is how you pray. Father. Remember? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And this is what we're doing right here. We're making the kingdom come. So this is a partnership. Alright. No free ride. Okay. But uh, see. Salvation is free. Okay. You're saved. You die. You go to heaven. Now. Uh, there's also rewards too. So if you do rewards for God. You do things for Jesus. Uh, that's uh, an extra bonus that you get when you get to heaven. Like uh, in the Bible, it talks about some crowns uh, you have, crown of life, things like that. He might give you some talents, some abilities. That's called graces. Graces. It says we get grace upon grace in John one, chapter one. At the end, we get graces upon graces. So here's a great. Here's this. I guess this is part of grace, right? So let's go, what we're really coming in here for is Matthew 16, 18. And uh, here's the scripture. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now this is a big scripture for me, because I was a Roman Catholic. And uh, the Roman Catholic Church said that uh, this means that uh, Peter is the first apostle and that's how God's going to build his church. But that is incorrect. Okay, incorrect. 
Uh, what this means here is because of, and they say he was talking about Christ asked Peter, asked his apostles, who is it that you say that I am? And nobody said anything, but Peter said, and I, uh, Peter, I say that you are the Christ. So Peter knew that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And, uh, and in fact, once you get the Holy Spirit, you're kind of like a, a part of, a part, uh, you don't get as much as Jesus got because Jesus got the whole, whole Holy Ghost, but you get a piece of the Holy Ghost, okay? And uh, we all have parts, like Jesus was the whole rainbow, but we're just little drops in that rainbow, okay? Okay, let's get, get, let's get straight. And I say unto thee that you are Peter, okay? And what's Peter mean? Peter means rock, okay, Petra, rock. Because Peter was a shifting sand before. Okay, Simon, Simon Bedronino. Simon, his name Simon means shifting sand. But Jesus gave him a new name here. Says, you know what, Peter? Uh, the Father has just told, gave you some information. He's, he, you've learned to listen to your Father. You learn to connect to the Father. So you're not going to be swayed by what you hear in the news or what you see by your eyes or uh, what you see by this world. Because you're going to know what is real by looking at the Father. You're going to look at the Father and you're going to become just like the Father. The image of Jesus Christ. You see me? You're going to become the express image of Jesus Christ. Because who was Jesus Christ looking at? He was looking at his father, okay? All the time, he was watching his father. Because who you watch and who you see is who you become. Ooh. So you really want to watch uh, uh, thousands of hours of football games and TV and, and these country stars? It's kind of almost like worship. And then only give God an hour a week, two hours a week, three hours a week? Then who are you going to become like? And on Resurrection Day, will you be a beautiful butterfly, ready for glorious things, or will you be a cold, dead, ugly-looking moth, afraid of the daylight, hiding in the corner, uh, in, in the shadows, like Adam did when he sinned, or will you be unashamed, flying in the sun, with beautiful, beautiful colors, on your journey? You may not know this, but butterflies can fly all the way from Mexico, all the way to Massachusetts, and they make a big journey of it every year. Kind of like we're on a journey, okay? Flying together. So, and to think at one time that they were a worm. In Psalms 22 it says, that shows all of Jesus' feelings on the cross, that he felt like a worm too. Jesus, Jesus on the cross after the Holy Spirit left because he had to be tested. The Holy Spirit had to leave at that time. Uh, he felt like a worm because he was on the cross and he was uh, wiggling. He had uncontrolled body movements and he was filled like a worm because, you know, it had blood all over him. He was on the cross there and it, it was wet on his back and, and dripping down from his thorns. Uh, he, they put his head and um, he, 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 Jesus under control body movements <sighs> really like that oh <gasps> he was suffocating to death okay and his heart got pounding and pounding and it was hot and everybody staring at him and he didn't have he was naked on the cross you know those crosses where they have a little, little uh, a little loincloth on him he didn't have a loincloth on. He was naked. Okay? And, and, and his clothes, they were, while he was dying, they were selling his clothes over the dice and everything. Alright? And uh, a lot of people just over there looking on horses and everything, going to the bathroom. Kids uh, going to the bathroom all over the place. And uh, God had to get him out of there with a thunderstorm. Uh, a big, a big uh, solar eclipse and everything and then uh, so God could, Jesus could have died in peace 
and get him off the cross in time. So you're supposed to take Jesus down off the cross in your meditations and put him in the, your cold, dead heart of your tomb of your heart and seal it up. And then you know what? When, when you prayed and you had Jesus come into your heart, that's when he rolled the stone away of your heavy burdens. And the light start being from your light face again. Do you know when you have a little baby, how, how uh, it looks so beautiful, and the light kind of seems to come out, out, out of that baby like streams of light? That's because when you're born, and until you reach the age of reasoning, then uh, uh, you're not. God doesn't hold no sin to you, so you got a connection with God, and all that light can just pour out. That's what that light's all about. A baby looks so, like it's just like an angel. So you can look like an angel again if you get connected to God and stay connected to God and put that old man away. Because what we got living in us is a snake pit. There is a snake pit right in your mind. All the demons in your head, snake pit. And like the Old Testament Holy Land, where they had to go and take the land and... Uh, they had to kill the giants, and, and they had the whole battle in, in the old, in the promised land and things like that. What that is, that's uh, kind of like your soul, and how you have to battle for your soul. Okay, and uh, you can have demons in your soul even as a Christian, but what you have to do is you have to force them out. You have to take your land. Now, when you're reborn, all them demons fled. But what happens, and I, I think that's, uh, uh, we're going to find 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 that out. But right here, I want to finish this scripture up. And I say unto you, uh, I say also unto you that you should be Peter. You'll be solid as a rock. You're going to be rock solid if you keep your connection to God. You renew your mind. You listen to the Bible, and uh, I say unto this, I, and, and, and upon this rock, this rock of revelation knowledge, upon this connection to God, okay, you and God, right? I will build my church. All right. Now, if we look at the word church, now these are little balloons. When I put my arrow, you see where I put my arrow? I put it there, and what happens is a little balloon comes up. And all the definitions from the old Greek language and things, what their word really means comes up. And what it says is uh, a, deviate, uh, a derivative of a calling out. See, a church is called out once. Uh, that is a popular meeting, especially a religious congregation, like a Jewish synagogue, or a Christian community, or members on earth, or saints in heaven, or both. It's an assembly. It's a church. Do you know what the assembling of your mean, of yourself means? It just doesn't mean uh, just to go to church. It means to assemble, okay? And if you really want to assemble, if you want to call yourself assembly, I'm going to give you a definition of that. You know, uh, I was trying to explain to my sister one time about... Uh, why things cost a little bit more money. Uh, like for instance, if you want to build a house, of course you got to buy the land, and then you have to go to a lumber store, because if you want to build it yourself, and you have to uh, order the lumber. So you go to church, and you order the lumber, and they deliver the lumber. And then you come back, because you're looking for your house now, you're ready to move in. But all you see there is nothing but lumber. It's not put together. They just dropped it in your yard. And the reason they did that is because it's not assembled. It's just sitting there in your yard. Same like everybody goes to church and you're all the little boards and two by fours and plywoods and nails and everything. Uh, you're all the pieces and you just show up. But you're not assembled. And you're not assembled because you're not working together. Uh, that the the boards have to be cut right. 
they have to be fitted together and they have to be nailed together they have to be pinned together and they have to have a blueprint okay that's what the Bible is it's a blueprint you have to have systems in your house you have to have a plumbing system you have to have a cooling system a heating system uh, if you want to live in there and you have to have glass uh, you have to have carpets you have to have a basement and an attic uh, not necessarily but a garage but you need a blueprint so how are you get a blueprint well we have to go to an architect and that just comes to my head right and who's the architect huh is it the Holy Spirit who gave Noah all those plants okay so the Holy Spirit and then how we get it okay we have what they call uh, was that like a gift of spirit that Noah had so he could understand uh, have wisdom to build that and the knowledge when when the ark was all completed and uh, in the uh, uh, flood uh, was stopped raining and he sent the bird out there and seen the rainbow was that kind of like a gift of will, a wisdom to see what the church would become through uh, because he was obedient so there we are that's the church okay now let's see what the, what the word gate mean uh, a gate uh, that is the leaf a wing of a folding entrance a gate okay let me see of hell okay the gate of hell all right that is Hades the state or departed souls grave and hell so basically people that go to the grave are dead right dead okay it says dead things will not bother you okay will not prevail against it that's you a town by the church again will not prevail against means it will not overpower you now you come dragging in the church like this every Sunday and uh, all, all 40 of you are over there in church and you know what happens I tell you the pastors up there he's gonna sing a couple song get a couple songs sing maybe uh, the hymnal and put one up there the uh, modern song and maybe uh, have somebody uh, say uh, a testimony or whatever but uh, and then he's gonna preach a message right but you've only given him like an hour to get you all renewed and put on fire and everything and uh, and I think you're expecting a mini revival on that hour to take you through the whole next week but year after year of doing that day after day and year after year and decade after, de after decade through your generations has just destroyed you okay you should always be on fire for God your children should be be able just to lay hands on people and heal them. okay but you know what's up it's not happening because well things didn't happen right so you just interpreted the Holy Spirit out of your your programs because the Holy Spirit he like to be in control he likes to be in control well he doesn't force you but he likes to make suggestions and to make to that happen you have to sit there and listen to what he's going to tell you but you have everything on a schedule the time you get in there this next two minutes has to be here the next five minutes for a song another song 10 minutes for testimonial 45 minutes for preaching uh, uh, five minutes for a song three minutes to get to the altar and pray and uh, the rest you gotta clear out now the Holy Spirit ain't gonna work with all that so I mean you didn't even sing a song inviting him so what the preacher does at the end of the service uh, in some denominations they just say okay come to the altar and repent because it's your fault and now after I preach that 
uh, before I was mad at preachers bringing it on the people, but now I can see that the people really are the fault. Uh, he, you want him to be, you want the preacher to be a miracle worker and revive your soul into revival status and be on fire for God to open the Red Sea and bring fire down from heaven on people. But uh, you don't even believe in miracles anymore. And then when uh, people get sick and you want them to pray for you or pray for your loved one, you know, the preacher said one time, uh, he, 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 he sat down at the Bible study and uh, he had people around him and uh, he, would go, he would go pray for the sick, right? And he says like this, he says, uh, I don't have any more, I don't have any power than any of you do. I don't, I don't have any power to uh, pray or heal anybody, but uh, why don't we all pray? So, I mean, he just dismissed the whole thing like that. I mean, you know, uh, because it, it's just a dead church because the pastor of that church said that he didn't need the Holy Spirit because Paul said that they could uh, do uh, only keep like, you know, uh, don't fornicate, and so a few other things like that, and that the Holy Spirit was uh, unnecessary. But you cannot build a church without the Holy Spirit. Because here, Christ says right here, the reason Peter heard from the Father is because, you know, I told you the Holy Spirit is like Wi-Fi, a Bluetooth. Okay. He, you cannot hear without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that connection to God that uh, empowers it. That's the way it works. That's how Jesus, Jesus could not do anything by himself. Uh, it was the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus came as the Son of Man. Okay? And as the Son of Man, that's why he went into water baptism, and that's why he got the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now, when he got the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was not given to man, uh, only apostles, uh, only you know, prophets, kings, priests, judges, but uh, the Holy Spirit was not given to everybody because, see, Jesus needed it first. All the Holy Spirit came on Jesus, just like it came on Adam and Eve. But all the Holy Spirit came on Jesus, the whole thing. And that's how he did his ministry. And that's how he heard from the Father. See, he was the whole rainbow. But where we get, we get our different gifts here. Maybe you, yours is prosperity. Then you're, you're like a green drop. Or, see, all the drops are just clear. It's the light, the way the light comes in through them that makes changes the color. Okay? And, and then I tell you, you can't see everything that's out in this world running around. You, you know, there's angels, there's demons. There's uh, fallen angels. Uh, who knows? Uh, the king, uh, it was Satan that uh, got control of Adam's uh, authority over the whole earth and the whole universe. No telling of what all the creatures that Satan has created out there for his own satanic kingdom. Okay? Because you heard about these cows being gone and people having uh, the cow's or sex organs removed and you sing flying saucers uh, things like that and then you hear the Antichrist is here now King Charles and uh, so there's two kingdoms out there there's the, there's, there's the kingdom of the devil there's uh, and this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ the tree of life then you got the old kingdom you got the uh, tree of uh, good and evil. See, God intended for Adam to chop the tree of good and evil down and throw the snake out. But he didn't do that. So Jesus had to come and do it for him. But nevertheless, uh, just like Job, when Adam fell, he lost a lot. And when Job lost everything, you know what happened? It was restored to him twice. So we are restored in Jesus Christ 
with uh, the Holy Spirit before Adam was a living soul but now we are a quickening spirit so uh, so we are spirit we are spirit okay and don't you ever forget that see Lucifer was made out of fire and he thought he was something special and uh, he had diamonds all over the place and he had gold and jewelry and he was all decked out and he was fire and he was dazzling right beautiful and uh, then he fell and became like a, a wreck he wrecked the whole thing so when God made man he made him from the dust of the earth he made man he made Adam uh, out of red clay uh, he made Adam out of mud he made the devil out of fire, and he fell out of pride. So he made Adam out of mud. Okay? So that would to, that's really uh, to make sure we stay humble and to uh, humble the devil. To say, see, devil, I'm going to make you with all this fire and drillery, but I'm going to make someone out of mud. I'm going to make something out of Adam out of nothing. A, a, a worthless clay uh, compared to your jewelry to show you that uh, he can be more powerful and do more than you and he's going to have dominion over you and even you're going to end up in hell because he's going to conquer he's going to be over you conquer conquer you and lock you up and also all of creation is watching this so this is the showing God's glory through man uh, uh, people of mud mud people uh, defeating a dazzling uh, something that used to be all dazzling and fiery and prideful a uh, humble man uh, a mud man is putting him in his place for God's glory and that shows the all creation for all time of eternity past present future and any dimension that God's glory is what it is. It was God's glory all along. And it had nothing to do with, uh, it wasn't the devil at all. Because the devil was nothing but a creation. And God can create it in any way that he wants. And God is always on the top. And you cannot compare uh, God and the devil together because uh, the devil is a creation. The devil would be like, uh, like maybe uh, one one grain of sand. Okay, the devil is one grain of sand, but God would be all the sand that was ever created on the all the beaches of the world and in the oceans, because it's sand on the oceans and all the planets throughout creation. That's how big God is. But the devil would only be one little minute grain of sand somewhere if you could find it okay so you cannot compare you cannot say that God and devil are opposites because there's no comparison no comparison that way okay all right so let me read the scripture again so and I say also unto you the that you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Okay? So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy it. Okay, then uh, I'm going to close this up. Then I'm going to go to my study notes. Let's see, back to my study notes. Here we go. There you are. Back to my study notes. Drop it down. Taste it. And you know what? I can make this bigger because no, you can't read it, right? You can't read that, right? Okay. Let's make it bigger. Put it on 36. All right. And this one's what we're really talking about. See, I don't know if you can see. You can see all those balloons. There's a balloon, balloon, balloon. I don't know if you can read that, okay? All right, uh, through the, my software programs. 
So let me see, the screen is halfway. So you know I can do it. I, I go like that. I go like that. Go like that. I will build my church. Okay, like this. Like that. All right, then here we go. Okay. Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And then see where my boss is going up here? Right there, see? If I press this down, it has all the different colors. Okay, so I'm gonna make a color there. I like color. Okay. Oh yeah. There you go. See if we did it. Okay. And uh, and, and as a result of uh, you knowing, keep, you know, keeping that connection strong with the Father, of revelation knowledge, of you listening to God and, and hearing what He's got to say, and every day doing it, you're becoming stronger. Every day when you're listening to God's voice and training your, your soul to listening to God's voice, you know, listening to your spirit and your mind together, your spirit and your mind are joining together stronger, more and more, so two can walk together. So if you have your mind in your, your, your mind all the time, and it's uh, connecting to the world through the news and your celebrity stars and your, all your movies, and God knows what else, and you got your uh, earbuds on, and you're listening to uh, rap music about hate. Okay, you, th I think there's some good rap music too, but it depends what kind you listen to, okay? And you can even see how your mind can start connecting to the wrong thing. And then you're not gonna hear God that way. But you have to put that stuff aside. You have to say, cut that off. Okay, you have to take an ax to the cable, okay? The ax to the tree. And you have to connect, connect your mind and your spirit, because in your spirit is Jesus, and then Jesus is the Father, and you're going to hear His voice. Okay, it might be still small voice at first, but as you meditate through your spirit, your belly is going to come up to your mind, right? And you're going to be able to see young men be able to see visions, and old men be able to dream dreams and you're gonna have, God's gonna be starting to teach you things, okay? Teaching you this method, teaching you this way. And this is how I wrote my website, okay? And the result of that is gonna be right here. All right, fresh bread. Let's get, let's get a different color, okay? Let's put a tan, okay? All right. And the, the result, your reward is the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You're going to uh, have eternal life and one day Jesus coming back in the twinkling of an eye at a time when nobody is expecting it he's going to translate you into an immortal uh, your body is going to become eternal but it will never die again and he's going to take you to heaven right there in the air you're just going to go, I don't know if he's going to like in Star Trek beam you up or you're, you're going to float up uh, or you're just going to disappear and reappear up there I don't exactly know the method, but you don't need a, no airfare to get there. No plane needed. You don't need no flying saucer. You don't need no transporter. You don't need no yoga. <laughs> Nothing like that. Okay? What they do in yoga and stuff like that, where they just sit like this, sit upside down, way over there, they, they think there's a spot in eternity somewhere where... Uh, there's the consciousness of everything all in one place. And when they uh, uh, have an empty mind, somehow they can get to that consciousness. But I will tell you, the Father must be what they're trying to get. It must be that consciousness. Because, uh, not that consciousness, but the Father knows all things, and all things are in the Father, past, present, and future present, eternity, and immortality, and anything you can think of, okay, he's telling you how 
to achieve that, and he, he he's inside of you, because if he got the Father God was not inside of you, you'd be dead. Okay, because you don't have life in yourself. Uh, your mother and father gave you a body. They did not give you life. Only Jesus Christ can give you life. So if you didn't have the Father in you, and you, don't have, you can't have the Father just by having the Father, Jesus Christ, you have to have Jesus Christ to get the, to have the Father, because the Father is so powerful. Uh, you cannot stand it that way, because Jesus shields us that way. So, uh, just think of yourself as a radio, okay? Or the Energizer Bunny. Uh, if you don't have a battery, you're not going nowhere. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you're dead. Okay, you have Jesus Christ, you can clap your hands and you can go like that all in all eternity. Praise his name. Okay? So let me see this one thing. I'm gonna save this. So this is the lesson for today. Okay. God's calling you. Hello? Will you answer the call? And this was just a bonus. So here it is. That's the scriptures. I know you can see that, right? So let's go here. Okay, and let's see, oh, after you get reborn and saved with the Holy Spirit and stuff, uh, what do you have to do? Okay, uh, I know one of the words is garnish. Oh, how about swept out? The house is swept out and swept. Swept. Oh. Here we go. I found it. It's Matthew. You know what? This time, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, copy and paste the whole thing. Copy and paste. See, I can just paste it to my study notes, but I'm just going to copy and paste it because I want it this page. So I'm going to put it down here. Copy and paste it. Okay. Stay with so I'll go nowhere. And right here. Uh, uh, I'm interested in Matthew. So I, I'm not going to throw those away because I might want to look at those later. That's Judges. What came up is Judges uh, 521 and Jeremy 4615 on that search. And the one earlier with the uh, building in the rock was Judges 626. But the main scripture with that one was Matthew 1618. And here, uh, what came up is swept is right here Matthew 12 44 so we're going to highlight that and we're going to make it bigger okay right here down to about 30 so you can see it right and then you know you only get half a screen right so let's just go ahead and, uh, like here make it bigger so you can see it okay okay Okay, so you can see it good. Empty and swept, okay. Garnished, oh, okay. There you go, he find it then. Oh. oh, there you go, let's talk about this. Matthew 12, 44. And this is when you're born. Why? What happens uh, when uh, someone casts a demon on you, or you're reborn, or you get the Holy Spirit? Then you're gonna be tested. Okay. This is the demon. Jesus. This is Jesus talking about what happens when a demon goes out of a man. Okay. When the darkness leaves you. Okay. Uh, then he saith, "I will return." The demon. Jesus says, the "Demon." The demon says this. And you can look it up in your Bible, read the whole chapter. Then he say, says, I will uh, oh, return. What does Satan mean? Okay. That is uh, uh, to break silence, uh, to boast. See, he's boasting. Uh, give out, uh, speak, utter, tell. See, then he boasts, I will return unto my house. See, he says, he, the demons think, that your house is their pro your, your property, the family, even the family. That this means dwelling, 
uh, it, it means family. I will return to my family. You know, demons live in families inside of you, okay? And not only that, not only they think you you are their property, but your whole family is their property because after you die, they move on into your children. If you don't deal with the demons inside of you, alcohol, smoking, swearing, cussing, fornication, whatever it might be, they those demons, when you die, go into your, your, your children and inherit their demons. That's called iniquity. Okay, where I came out, okay, well, we know I came out of you, right? And uh, he finds empty, okay? He, he, he gets cast out of your house, and he brags how much he owns you, and he's going to come and, and live with you again, and he finds you, okay? And he just, you know, that's what it means, finds, find. And you're empty, right? You know what empty means? You haven't been praising God. You're on a holiday, it means holiday. They're not, you, they're not even thinking you're vacant, you're empty. You, you give yourself, all right? You, you, you're not filled up with the things of God. Uh, they, uh, I guess they repossess your furniture and things. The church is not your, your soul. All the music and the good things and Bible teachings is vacant, okay? It's empty and you're, no one's no one's there to answer God's call. So you know who's going to move in there? He finds it empty and garnished. Okay? So, you know, maybe he's got some flowers in there. Uh, or maybe he got a nice picture of Jesus. But basically it's empty and it looks nice. Right? But there's no power there. Because he ain't filled up with the Holy Ghost. So you know what he does? Uh, he moves in. Okay? Okay, let's go uh, Matthew 12, 44. We can get it up. So I, I, I go up there, I find the Bible, and then I go down to where it says Matthew. Okay, I go up to 12. Go down there, we want uh, 43. Okay? 43. Then we go to the Bible. It says right here. Okay. We did the first one. And and then uh, he returned into his house and he came out, right? Okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to take this here. 1245. I'm going to copy that. Okay. See, the reason I clicked on, on making it go back, because right here, see this here? If I if I if I pin this, whenever I get a scripture, it go to those study notes uh, and make a blank page. So uh, I I don't have want it moving around. That's why I use this to unpin it when I use E button. And then we're going to make it big. We're going to go right here. See, you can actually more than one teaching here. Okay, we're we going to do this here. Okay. Right there. Make it 36. All right. Where's the part? Okay. Then, uh, he goes, let me see. Okay. Right, let's get this here. I don't want to mess down that. And when you get your e-sword, that's www.esword.net. Be sure to get this too. King James Version Plus. And then you get the King James Version Bible, you know, with it. Make sure you get these too, right? Let me make that big for you. Okay. So you can see it good. That way you can look with this. You can look up all the meanings and everything. You don't have to wait for a preacher to be telling you. And that way your Bible experience will be more. Uh, you enjoy it more. Because it will be wonderful. 
you'll be wanting you'll be wanting to see it. It won't be dry. Well, you got the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, inside your your heart is all dry, and you don't want to really read the Bible because it's yuck, right? But it's like watching a black and white TV, right? You don't really you know it's not there. Nothing's there. Just some images. But when you got the Holy Spirit, what happens? The Holy Spirit turns everything into living color and beautiful sounds. I mean, it's like, uh, it's them having like a little radio with static in it. You know, with, without the Holy Spirit, you have a beautiful sound, surround sound system with a zoom screening and everything and all kinds of broadcasting features and everything. Okay? So it's very, it's very, a very lively life. And uh, you know how you drink your bottle, you drink your alcohol, and then at the end, that bottle's empty, and you throw it in the living room floor, and you're looking at it. It costs you a whole bunch of money. Well, with the Holy Spirit, you get the one cup of water, never runs out. Uh, when you put your hands up, it's free refills. That's how Burger King decided how to have the re free refills. Because that one there is uh, copying it for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is like seven spirit, seven spirits in one. So he gives you seven different angles to look at something. That's why that guy in the Old Testament had, and judges somewhere. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's judges. He had uh, the Kings, Book of Kings or somewhere. He had different self. Uh, it was a general coming down because he had leprosy. Uh, to uh, throw himself into the river, the prophet told him that seven times. So his leprosy could be healed. And that's kind of like the Holy Spirit's number, because he had to look at things seven times. So you have to study enough so you have all the seven angles to be healed. Because the Lamb of God in the book of Revelation that was slain, it was uh, the Lamb was slain on the throne with uh, bled to death, right? And that Lamb had eyes, it was full of eyes. Because uh, that's the Spirit. See, when you get the Holy Spirit, you get seven or more eyes. You know, when you get the Holy Spirit, there's actually ten people living in you. You got the seven spirits of the Holy Ghost. You got the Father. You got Jesus, because the Father's in Jesus. And you got yourself. That's why Daniel is ten times smarter than anyone else in the book of Daniel. In the Babylon King, or Babylonian Kingdom. But, uh, see, when you got when you don't have God living inside of you, I mean, when that when the curtain is not torn through the blood, you did that by putting the blood of Jesus on you. See, I, in the first video, I had the player of salvation, everything, I explained it to you. Uh, you might want to look that one up. Uh, you, you before. Uh, you get saved. You know what? When you are saved, you have seven spirits living in you. When you uh, when you are not saved, don't tell you how many could be in you. Because the guy in the Mark five, the two demoniacs, one guy had five thousand in him demons, and he could break chains and they could do all kinds of feats and everything, right? But uh, he cut himself and. He was miserable. He lived in caves. He lived in isolation. So I lived all by myself all my life. I had the Holy Ghost. So I've been talking to him. So then goes he and takes with him seven other spirits. See it says seven? You know why he's doing that? That's number seven. Because he is uh, copying the Holy Ghost. Because uh, he doesn't want you to get free no more. Now, a current of air, a spirit, it says a current of air, a breath, a breeze, uh, a disposition, of superhuman strength, angel, a demon, divine God. See, we're talking about spirits, what the spirits could be. Uh, the Holy Spirit's a spirit, a ghost. Okay? So, uh, we know when a demon brings seven other spirits, he's bringing seven other brothers, more wicked wicked spirits. He's bringing wicked, wicked spirits. 
Okay, a wood spigot. Let's see if that comes out. And it is like uh, more evil than himself. Okay, it is he get not only a more wicked spirit, but seven more wicked than himself. And they enter in. Okay, it says that means they come or enter in. Okay, and dwell there. Uh, they house there permanently. It means to stay there permanently, to reside there as an habitation. It's like you bought the house. When you buy the house, no one's going to get you, force you out, right? So they own you, okay? They got themselves a free real estate there. And the last state of that man, let's see that state, the, the state means, your state, what does a state mean? Uh, okay. It's more intensified. Okay, your state is, you're worse off than you were before. It says right there. It's worse than the first it was. And it shall be also to this wicked generation. See, so generation after generation gets worse and worse. Did you notice that every generation gets worse? That's because, the, you know, they get cast down and they bring more and more. So. That's why you have to stay tuned and stay plugged in. All right? That's what that means. So, uh, let's see where we're I told you that one. Let me see. So, make sure, this one more time. Here, don't forget to donate if you can, because uh, I like to try to uh, do more things with the gospel than I'm doing right now. But uh, uh, sometimes I need help doing it, okay? So if you can help me, sometimes I need a computer or whatever, uh, microphones, and, and I, I can't get them. Uh, so everything I like on my own, okay? But here's a free computer program right here, the best in the world, eSword. That's the one I'm using. And see, this is what the devil wants to do you. You see, this was World War II. They killed all those Jews, and that's what the soldiers found when, when, they, when they went there and freed those people. And you know what's happening in Ukraine right now? They don't need this, they don't have, they turn Ukraine into one big concentration camp, basically. And they just killing everybody, destroying all the buildings, they're wiping out the whole culture. Okay? Don't think that that can't happen to you. Because, you know, I live in South Carolina, and South Carolina, they have a whole bunch of turkey farms. And they build a whole bunch of prisons everywhere in the United States, but they can easily turn those turkey farms into prisons. One day, the state government could be a, a police state, and they could march in there into your church and make you pledge allegiance to the Antichrist. And if you won't do it, I feel that somebody has a uh, feeling power, feel power in the legs, feeling power in the spine. Someone's spine condition is being healed, leg condition is being healed, uh, arms, a broken arm is being healed. Uh, someone, someone with a neck, that's being healed. Uh, let me see. Thrombosis, or something like that. Uh, your heart, uh, your head, over here, your elbows, arthritis. Uh, everything just move around just claim it you see there's so many people out there and the people not only for now but people who's gonna watch us in the future people who might watch us after i'm dead okay uh maybe after i'm raptured and they can, can be healed everywhere be healed everywhere uh, your mind is being healed too emotions uh blood diseases blood clots all free so lord god Right now, put just touch your claim these miracles. Now ask God uh, to heal anything that your problem is. Father God, I ask you to do a Jesus fix in all these people, Lord God. Do you know? You know when you got me that I was weak. That I was just a mud man, and in myself I can do nothing. Uh, 
I never went to call a theology in college except for PTL for three or four years of, of my home TV. I watched that. You turned that into college for me. And I prayed to you and listened to you. And not that I'm a perfect man, because I, I, I did go astray a few times, but uh, everyone has. But Lord, I ask you in your power to heal these people because only you can do it in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if the bother, de devil's bothering you, you know, just pre pray a prayer and like this, you know, uh, put your fingers together and tell the angels when you, when they put your fingers together, that means your prayer of deliverance, that they need to act on it. Okay? Because a lot of times, you know, I just go like this and the devil just leaves because uh, they don't want to uh, be on the South Pole forever. Okay? The kingdom come. So, don't forget to get that program, because you need to uh, remember partnership. You need to keep that connection strong. You, you need to read and learn the Word of God for yourself. And this is how you do it, right? This is how I build all those websites. Okay. And there we are again. Let's go here. You see, that's the donation. And then here... What I have is the Holy Spirit assures us of our salvation. Okay, but the Holy Spirit can help us here. He bears witness that we are the children of God, that He can set our doubting hearts at rest. Similarly, Paul states that God has given us His Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. That's in 2 Corinthians. 1 verse 22 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 5 and you know you can look that up now when you've got your free Bible and that's a whole nother sermon there I could be here for another hour okay and it's in the bottom it says uh, www.gloriousmercy.com that's that this QR code doesn't go there uh that's, that's the who made this icon. I put my my uh, website down there because I made the icon. Okay? But the web, the QR code for the Holy Spirit goes to uh, the Holy Spirit, another web page from another Christian. And the one for uh, the green one goes to my Glorious Mercy website because that's where I handle my donations through PayPal. Okay, I handle it through PayPal. Okay, and let's, uh, I should set up a few more. I want to set up a few more uh, ways to pay. I'm not charging you money. This is only free world offerings. And you don't have to give money. Okay? God's plan is perfect. You know I, I, I don't want your money. I only want your soul. Okay? <laughs> All right. A plan from heaven above, filled with all of His love. He has everything I need, if I only believe. All right. Now what that's about, as you see here, this is a movie about Peter. And that song goes perfectly with this movie about St. Peter. If you, that's why I put that song in there. This song is called God's Perfect Plan. And where you can get by this song at is right here uh, on this QR code where it says God, God's Word is Spirit and His Word is Eternal Life. If you click on that, you go to uh, the Ernest Angeli org, the Ernest Angeli uh, website, and you can get free books. No, free sermon. You get free sermons. Uh, and they sell books and everything there. They sell music, too. You can buy this song for 99 cents. And their name of the guy who's singing it is Tyler Murray. And it costs 99 cents. And the name of the song is God's Plan is Perfect. And then you know what's so beautiful is God's Love, Romans 5, 5. When, when I studied that scripture, that's my first sermon I did. Uh, a couple days ago, uh, 
when I understood that knowledge, something's happened to me. It's just kind of like formatted. Uh, it's rearranged and everything. i never be the same. Okay? I can't stop thinking about it. I can't put it down. Okay? Because we should always bear the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in our heart, in our, in, our, in our soul at all times. So, you know what? Uh... Uh, so you know, there's no life that's greater than that, that which is given from heaven above. God's plan is perfect. There is a perfect plan for you. Just give. Okay, and that goes with this movie right here, Apostle Peter. You get that on YouTube free. See, on YouTube, uh, I pay like $12.95 for my service where it's, it removes all the ads. And then uh, I can just, uh, I don't have music, uh, streaming. I don't pay for no no Spotify or anything, any other any other programs like that or TV programs or nothing like that because I get... Uh, don't even watch TV no more. Uh, but you can get free from, with these air, uh, free. You can lose cable with these free antennas. But uh, that's it. That's a wrap. Now, what we're going to do here? I, I that's what that YouTube uh, for twelve ninety five. And you can watch the whole movie without interruption. And if you really want to download it, you can even download it there. Now, if you want to keep, get the movie to keep it, you get that realplayer.com. And there I have a little icon up on top. Uh, so you can download wherever you want. And they also have something in your tray if you want. And uh, it's very, that's one of the best ones I've seen. So, thanks for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe. Say that again. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And the program I'm using here is xsplit.com. That's better than OPS. xsplit.com. And uh, I also have the... Uh, X, X split broadcaster and the X split cam and there's also an uh, uh, X split connect where you can use your cell phone your Android uh, as a camera uh, and I didn't do that yet but uh, I have like a camera is e meet the camera's name is e meet uh, that's what I'm using right now but uh, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, figure all this out and adding, adding something every time I'm using it. See, that now is making a circle uh, when I go from screen to screen. Before it didn't do that. Now I'll show you about the software. Okay? Look, this is my first screen. I have buttons. All I have to do is click a button. There you go. See, I'm right there. Okay? And uh, I just press my tray, get my uh, e sword up. And then I can, I'm in that screen. I put it down. But press the button in my tray. Then I click the next button. I click the next button. Next button. Next button. Next button. Next button. Next button. Now here's the tricky part. Turning this off. Okay. I'm going to attempt to turn it off now. And I think I'm going to... Uh, uh, click the red button on top which says record and click uh, the X checkbox the checkbox was checked okay and that should do it let's see
Love me, see.